up everybody thank you for coming to another detailing video today we have a new detailer the homie chris right here how you doing chris doing good man doing good what job do we have today so we're doing a maintenance detail on this rolls royce right here this is a reoccurring customer so we're just gonna get them right uh for the week all right chris how long you been detailing two years now man professionally like this about a year so let me ask you why did you choose a trailer instead of those vans so everything that i've kind of purchased by myself so usually if you see the uh the logo right there i got a jeep but the next uh, logical step would be to get a vehicle um, that made things uh, a little bit easier for me to detail. Mm -hmm. So when I was making the purchase of the trailer, I, uh, I was thinking to myself, I said, okay, you know, just starting out, I wanted to make a, a logical um, purchase. So with the trailer, if my detailing business didn't work out, I would obviously be able to use it for other things such as, you know, transportation of goods. I mean, you know, Every household needs a truck, a trailer, you know, because if somebody ends up moving or something like that, you know, throw the couches back there. So pretty much you got a trailer just in case just in the case. mobile detailing didn't go as planned. Just in case, man. Yeah, exactly. But exactly. you've been doing this a year. So how has it been going? It's been going good, man. I, uh, I can't complain. I mean, a year in. In comparison, I hate comparing myself to other people, but you know, as a business owner, you have to do that every once in a while. So I like to compare myself to other detailers and uh, I'm right there with them, man. I mean, some of the best detailers in the Central Valley um, have been doing it for quite some time now. But as far as, you know, a year in to their businesses, I'm right there with them, man. All right, so there you go. We're gonna see how Chris does a maintenance wash. Let's get started. You ready, Chris? I'm ready, man. All right, let's do it. Let's let's do it. All right, Chris. So, what's the first thing you do? All right, man. So, trailer's a little bit of a mess right now. Everything always gets moved around. Dude, that's all you got? That's all I got, man. Dang. I'm a minimalist at heart. That was one of the things I knew you'd probably bring up. I was watching a couple of your other videos, man, and I see that, you know, all these guys got these high-tech gadgets, and I'm a minimalist, man, which is uh, one of the things I wanted to kind of talk about is, like, you know, a lot of the misconceptions about detailing is is you got to have everything top of the line. You got to spend ten, fifteen thousand dollars to get your business going. And if I'm going to be completely honest right now, I mean, when I first started, the first six months, I was detailing out of the back of my out of the back of my Jeep. So I had like very little material. I had very little uh, money in the bank account, but obviously I had a passion for detailing. So I uh, I was working with what I had, man. So kind of translated into uh into today man you know i i now have a little bit more stability i have more money in the bank account but i still choose to to work with as little product as possible hey man now uh, i'm excited to see how you work bro because you're right look every other detailer you know they got dozens of products dozens exactly, of man. equipment hey let's, let's see how you do chris let's do it man I know you're gonna do hey, great, bro. Hey, hey, hey i mean the fact that you know, I got a Rolls Royce on, on the clientele list. It speaks volumes in itself Ooh. right there, man. So can't uh, can't complain about that. Wait, wait, where do you get water from? Customer? Yeah, so they actually have a advanced filtration. Um, everything that they use, their water is that XH2O. So it's non, uh, it doesn't have uh, minerals in it. It's all purified. So they have an advanced setup. Usually I have a water tank in the back of my truck. Mm. Don't need it today. So I decided to, uh, to just bring what I needed. All right, Chris. So you just foamed it up. Just foamed it up. And your technique is you gotta let it sit for a while. Yeah. So let let the let the so the suds. I'm sorry. Encapsulate the dirt. Um, that way, when we rinse it off right now. We have somewhat of a clean surface to work with. We're gonna re-foam it, and then we're gonna go ahead and start agitating or scrubbing the paint. Will you learn how to detail? Oh man, lots of videos starting out. Trial and error was a big one. Working on my vehicle, so I have a Jeep, and I swear I, I washed the paint off on that thing, man. I was washing it like every other day. Um, working with other detailers, kind of just picking up on things, man, being a sponge. That was the biggest thing when I started out. Hey, 
Chris, so you were saying, man, you were detailing in Fresno. I assume you lived in Fresno. You live in a smaller town 10 minutes away from Fresno. Yes. But you're telling me you're mainly over here in the bigger city? Yeah, Why? so like Fresno, Clovis area. Clovis is the big one. So Clovis is a, uh, what hey, is people that? People in Clovis, man, they got money? North of, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, Clovis is the new spot, man. And that's why you don't really focus in your town because, you know, not trying to talk dookie, but they want the full price at car wash prices. Yeah, exactly, man. Yeah. Exactly. Honestly, I mean, it doesn't really matter where the details at. Um, you know, if they're willing to, to pay my prices and not give me, you know, too much of a headache about it, I'll be out there. I'll be more than willing to wash their vehicle, man. Hey, but you know what, man? You were telling me your prices? They're not that pricey compared to other detailers. No, man, they're not. Um, and I, I think that's kind of worked in my favor. It kind of gives me a little bit of leniency. So one of the biggest things that I've noticed in the detailing community is, is I get a lot of customers who have gone to other detailers before and they charge double what I'm charging. So the expectations are double mm -hmm. um, in those situations. So I think, you know, I let my customers know prior to uh, to detailing their vehicles, I let them know what my details entail, and they're well aware of the results that they're gonna get even before I finish the detail. So there are no surprises. At the end of the detail, I, uh, I have them look it over and I don't leave that spot until they're satisfied with the results. All right, so you say, you know, you walk them through, they point out anything they want fits, if Correct. there's anything. Correct, but yes. But have you ever had that customer like you miss this, you miss that, you miss like. Yeah, I've, I've had that once before, man. I uh, so they opted for the hundred dollar detail, and their vehicle was by no means dirty, man. I mean, it was dust here and there, but they were really wanting the dust and the cracks to kind of go away. And uh, and in my hundred dollar detail, that's really not included because in order to get those areas clean, you got to use steam. So steam cleaning is one of my services that I provide in my premium package which is 200 bucks and I informed the client of that and it seemed like she was kind of aware of it you know going going into it but you know once I showed her the vehicle she was kind of expecting a little bit more and I let her know and you know once she kind of had the understanding like hey you know it really wasn't included in the package though her vehicle wasn't dirty she wanted a, an additional service that cost more money mm. how'd she take it she took it real cool? good, man. Yeah, she was really nice. I've never had a customer that, you know, I wouldn't go back to. I mean, I love all my customers. They all have their uh, special place in my heart, man. I mean, every customer that I go to, I appreciate them for having me. I mean, a lot of the customers that I have are from word of mouth. Um, so, you know, I, I like I said, man, I just appreciate every customer that comes through and is willing to to trust me with their cars, you know, sometimes cars like this. Clean, man. It's coming out good, man. I gotta get the detail spray at the end, but looks a lot better. All right. Hey. Chris, I have a question for you, man. What's up, what's up? Where'd you get this vacuum from? What Star Wars? <laughs> so that one, man, funny stories. I was using a DeWalt from Costco, man. DeWalt, yeah, from Costco. That one ran me about 120 bucks for the vacuum and it broke on me like three times, man. I just wasn't having it. There was a filter. It was a filter inside of the actual vacuum itself. And I just wasn't having it, man. I, I was getting tired of taking the trip out to Fresno for it. So I was at an appointment one time and the vacuum went out on me. So I was like, okay, well, you know, there's only one store in Kerman that is open right now and that was Walmart. So I got this one and I had always planned on getting another vacuum, man. I was looking into getting other vacuums. But I stuck with this one, man. I mean, I've had it for five months and no problems at all, brother. At all. 
Hey man, whatever works for you, bro. Whatever works best for me. And I mean, I see like, like I said, man, I'm a, I'm a minimalist. I see a lot of other detailers out there that have these 300, 400, 500 dollar vacuums, 600 dollar vacuum systems, and you know they're producing the same results as me. They may be getting done a lot faster, but I'm not really worried about producing at a fast rate. I'm worried about producing, you know, quality results. So if it takes me an extra 30 minutes to vacuum a vehicle, I mean, it's showing the customer that I'm willing to take the time on their vehicle. Because I mean, if I'm, you know, washing their vehicle and I'm in and out in an hour, I mean, to the customer, or, you know, if I was getting the service done, I would see it as like, man, this guy's kind of rushing my car. When in all reality, it may be, that may not be the case. Kind of looks like it, man. So I, uh, I'm getting good results with it. I can't complain, so I just stuck with it, man. Hey, so I see you taking some pictures. Yes, sir. Is Instagram the only way you get business? Uh, no, so I actually do Marketplace on Facebook. Uh, or I'm sorry, Inst uh, Facebook ads. So I charge, I usually have an ad up running every day. Um, I usually spend about five bucks a day on on Facebook. So about a hundred bucks a month. And I get quite a bit of business from there as well. That's where the money's at, man. It's people on Facebook, they're able to spend a little bit more money. If you look at the platform on Facebook, and what's cool about Facebook too, man, is like you can actually prioritize what age range you want to reach so for example i have my age range set for ages 30 to 65 within 30 miles from me so everybody that i get is usually around that age all right okay hey, but so pretty much you just take pictures for instagram just cuz uh yeah work. man i actually get so it's about 50 50. so my instagram clients are usually people um returning customers i get to know them on a little bit more of a personal level hey chris what's up man so you're gonna look over it one more time yeah look over it one more time get any streaking so this is like the third time i've seen you go over it yeah hey. man it's all in the details so when do you know enough is enough because i don't know if you did this when you first started where you spent an excessive amount of time going over the car yeah 100 you know what i mean yeah, I really don't set a limit on the amount of time that I spend on a vehicle. I mean, obviously there's a, a cap, you know, an excessive amount for a vehicle like this would be like a three hour detail. I'm kind of sitting at like two hours on this $80 detail, um, which I mean, it's the last one of the day, so I don't have anything after this. So, I mean, if it takes me an extra 30 minutes and I get the car looking that much better, you know, the goal is to get this $80 wash looking like a $100 wash that extra $20 of effort that you put into this, uh, to, the, to each detail is what gets you vehicles like this, what, what gets me new customers, man, that kind of what, what separates me from other people, I think. So I kind of just go over the car, comb over, make sure there's no streaking, no areas I miss. So like, this was the bottom of the tire, so I'm gonna hit that one more time, get the tire shine even, um, paint looks good. I put a detail spray on that. It's ceramic coated already, so, I mean, the vehicle looks good. Just put a little bit more tire shine on there. And that's about it, man. I think we're all set with this with this car. It's successful detail. Can't beat it, man. Another day at the office. All right, there you go. We're done. Hey, pretty good job, man. Not bad, huh? Yeah, easy, easy. Easy work, eh? When the, when the vehicle's well-maintained, it's, it's pretty easy getting it done. There you go. All right, Chris. Before we let you go, let's say somebody out there that wants to see your work, they want to place a detail, where can they go? So you can go on uh, on Instagram, uh, underscore 559 detail. Uh, pretty much same thing on, in, on Facebook. So 559 detail, you can find me there. There you go. So if you're in the Fresno area, you need a detail, go hit them up. I'll, I'll put all the links in the description below. And if you enjoyed this video, you want to see more detailing content, press the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Bye everybody. Thank you guys.